So now I went ahead and I um, loomed the rest of it. I yarned over all 30 pegs and now we're back at the beginning again. Um, so now what we're going to do for our next round, and we only did that once. Um, we didn't go wrap around again and do a few rows. I guess you could, but um, that's not what I'm doing. I'm, cause I'm already at the point of the, of the hat where these amount of decreases should be right at the top of my husband's he head. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to peg number four. Remember, this is the anchor. This is peg one, two, three, four. And we're going to uh, take the yarn, like last time, carry it over from this peg over to number three peg. And then we're going to yarn over. So rather than struggle on camera doing this, because this is a really tough yarn to do it with, I'm going to do it off camera. Um, and the, when I did it before on the hat before, it wasn't hard at all. It was just regular yarn, real thin yarn, not all these little strands that get caught. So it's a little difficult. So I don't know what kind of yarn you're using, um, uh, if it's thick or thin. If you use a, a thin piece of yarn like this, just, um, I'll, just a second, let me see if I can find it. If you're using just a thinner piece of yarn, just your regular piece of yarn like this, then it's going to be a hat with more holes in it. I wish I had my hat that I made the last time, but my daughter has it in her room. And I would show you that it's a different kind of a look. It's a more flimsier, not so sturdy of a hat, but she wore it the day I, the next day after I made it, and she got so many compliments on it. And her friends were like, I want a hat like that. And she said, my mom makes them if you want to buy one from her. So, um, they loved it, and it wasn't half as sturdy looking as this. It was just kind of really cool looking. You could, you could, there was, the holes were a little bigger. But anyway, my point is, you can loom with yarn this thin, or what they suggest a lot of times is taking two strands of this thin of yarn and working with two strands of yarn, which basically makes it about this thick. So that's what I'm working with this time. But I am finding that it's harder to, um, make my decreases from pulling the fourth one over to the third one and, and then wrapping over. That's making it difficult. As you'll see, I'll try one again just to see if I've, but I'm sure I'm going to struggle with it, but you've got the concept down and I'm sure your yarn will be a little easier to work with than mine. It's just that my husband picked a really hard yarn to do this part with. So now we're just going to bring the fourth over to the third. There we go. There we go. We did it. It's just difficult to do. So rather than do that on camera, now go to the next section and go to fourth peg. One, two, three, four. Take the yarn from there and carry it over to the third. And then once you've got it carried over to the third, take your yarn and yarn over. So go ahead and do that now to um, the fourth peg on each section. Carry the yarn from the fourth peg over to the third and then yarn over and then meet me back here. So now that we've made our, our second set of decreases from the fourth peg, one, two, three, four, to the third, now we're going to e-wrap again. But remember, we're only going to e-wrap around the pegs that have yarn. So we skip that, we skip that. We're only going around the ones that have yarn. Skip that, wrap, skip, wrap. Skip, wrap, skip, wrap, skip, you know what, I think I might have missed a section, didn't I, somewhere, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, no, I did it right, okay, so we're just going to continue doing that, continue doing the wrapping only around the pegs that have yarn and then you know what to do next after here I am at the beginning again I'm just going to now um, loom over just yarn over the ones that have um, yarn on the pegs and then the next decrease that we're going to do and I'll just have you do that instead of coming back and starting another video is then we're going to go from pe peg number six one two three four five six and bring the one piece of yarn over to this side and we're going to yarn over that. Um, maybe I'm confusing you by doing this, but just the way you did um, the second to the first and the fourth to the third, we're going to do that now to the sixth to the fifth. 
and then yarn over and then I'll meet you back here right now we're still on the one from the one two three the fourth to the third so now we yarned over now we're gonna now we're gonna do our looming with our hook okay and I'll be back so when we let off last time we were doing the fourth peg over to the third peg um, for, for our decrease and then I was trying to explain to you to go to the sixth peg one two three four five six and take the yarn over to the fifth and yarn over and I felt like I kind of left that a little confusing so I left the very last section to do my on camera one two three four five six so here's the sixth and I'm carrying it over to the fifth and then yarning over whoops so there's our last decrease of the hat so now we're going to do our next step which is do our e wrap on only the ones with oops I forgot to when I did this decrease I forgot to wrap yarn over I mean so now we're going to wrap only around the ones with yarn so that's a little faster now it's every other peg that we are I did the same thing over here sorry guys getting ahead of myself there okay so now Hopefully I didn't make that mistake on, oh, I did, right here on this peg. See, but it's, that's how easy it is to fix your little mistakes. And it's not really a mistake, it's just a step that I forgot on my previous step. So every other one, we're wrapping, and here we are at the end again. And I'm going to do this just to, um, so it doesn't... So it doesn't unravel before I get to here. So now we're just going to do the same thing we've been doing. Just yarn over. And then I'm going to keep the camera on because this is the last decrease and we're going to finish off our hat now. I hope you've enjoyed loom knitting. I know I surely am. It's uh, very addicting. It's very easy. It uh, is very um, calming and relaxing because it's so repetitive, other than the decreasing part. You don't have to really think a lot. And so you can kind of daydream or just relax your mind. So I'm really enjoying loom knitting. I enjoy crocheting and regular knitting too. But So anyway, now there we are at the end and our very last decrease. And so now the next step is that we're going to take this yarn, our working yarn, and we're going to wrap it around a couple times. We're going to measure it around a couple times, like so, and then we're going to cut it. And I left my scissors somewhere. Oh boy. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop this so that I can go find my scissors. So anyway, I found my scissors. Yay, my pretty pink scissors. So what we did is we wrapped it around twice, the working yarn. That's our measuring, because that's going to be our drawstring. And then when we get to the peg, we're not going to need all this, but just for safety measures, we wrap it around a couple times. Now we're done with the working yarn. I take this off, and now what we're going to do is we're going to work this drawstring yarn into our hat by holding it like this and actually bringing the loop catching the drawstring and just drawing it in like this so we're just working in the yarn like so go to the next one here's the yarn on the peg we're just going to grab pick that up grab that drawstring yarn and basically like sew it in or I don't know what you would call it just work it in you're working it into that so we're going to do that all the way around I guess we could even do it like this instead of putting that yarn on the bottom we can just bring it in like this as long as it gets into that other into the see now it's connected see how it's connected now now it's connected to the hat so that's what we're trying to do that's what we're trying to accomplish is um yeah, I'm making it more difficult than I need to. There we go. Just draw it in. 
And we're going to do this all the way around. I'll keep doing it just in case I'm not showing it as good as I can. So I'll try to do it slow. Pick up that yarn, go over that yarn, and then draw it through. Whoops, it's kind of hard. Not really. I think it's my yarn that's making it kind of hard. Okay, going to just keep doing that all the way around. Pick up that yarn. And then meet me back here. So we'll just keep doing that and then meet me back here and I'll show you what to do with that. So I'm back. I'm finishing the connecting the drawstring onto here. My husband's on my string here though. Um, and so what this is called, a lot of times they call, when you're taking your project off of the loom, they call it binding off. Um, so this particular type of binding off is, or casting off is called drawstring cast off because you're using, you're not having to use the little needle that came with it. A lot of times you use your needle, but we're just using the drawstring. So it's a drawstring cast off. Camera's probably a little too close right now. Yeah, not too far, but we don't want it too close because I'm having a hard time seeing. Okay, so I'm almost at the end. And then I'll show you what to do. Yay, we're almost done. Okay, we want to do, we've already done this one. We've already connected this to the drawstring, but we want to reattach it again because we want it to be a con. A, a, total loop around so now it's completely connected so now what we're going to do is don't be scared we're going to take it off of the loom completely we're taking the project off of the loom you can either do it with your hook or you can just do it with your fingers and take it off but we're taking the project off now Like I said, don't be scared. It looks like, ah, it's all going to unravel, but it's not. It's all connected to that drawstring. See how it's all coming off the loom? Our project is almost finished. So this is what we're left with. This is what it looks like at this point. So what we're going to do is just pull the drawstring. Yep, just pull it. There you go. And this is what you're left with. And you see it's not as, um, it's not, if, if you work it through a little bit, it's more, it's got that nice little decrease right there. It's not all bunched up like your regular looming hats. Your regular looming hats are just always, they, they always look like this. They always look bunched up at the top. But with this decrease, look at how nice after you work the yarn a little bit. You gotta kinda play with it for the first couple minutes there so that everything kinda lies down. And there you go. That's your loom hat. And that's your decrease at the end, which I think is really nice. It doesn't look like you're not letting everyone know that you're a loom knitter. They probably think you knitted it with two needles. <laughs> we don't need to let them know that we cheated and did it with a loom. So now with this drawstring that's left, now you can either take your needle, if you can get the, the yarn into here, and you're going to weave the tail into, into here and tie a knot, and that's it. You're done. After you weave it into the top, Cut it off wherever you're comfortable with, and there's your hat. We're done. Yay! Isn't that really nice looking? My husband's going to be happy. Do you like it? I like it. Husband <laughs> cut, cameraman? It's <laughs> awesome, babe. Okay, cool. Good job. All right. Ta-ta.